for surface integrals, if the function f defined on the surface s is simply f of x, y, z equals 1, the surface integral yields a surface area of s. So if you have this double integral s for surface integral of 1 ds, that ends up being the area of the surface. If s is a lamina of variable density, and rho of x, y, z is the density at the point x, y, z, then the mass of the lamina is given by the surface integral of rho of x, y, z, d, s. As we've seen in the previous sections, surfaces can also be represented using parametric surfaces, uh, vector functions with additional parameters u and v. For a surface that's given using a vector valued function r in terms of u and v where that is equal to x in terms of u and v i plus y in terms of u and v j plus z in terms of u and v k, then this double integral for surface of f of x, y, z, d, s is found by taking a double integral where d is the region that is defined, that defines the surface and you're going to replace every x in this function with what x equals on the surface. You're going to replace every y with what y equals on the surface in terms of u and v. And you're going to replace every z in the equation with what z equals on the surface in terms of u and v. And you're going to multiply that by the cross product of the partial derivative of r with respect to u with r with respect to v. Then you take the magnitude of that and then multiply by dA. dA is going to be your differential area, and the region D is going to be the region D in the UV plane. So your bounds are going to be in terms of U and V. So dA would be du times dV or dV times du. In this example, we want to evaluate the surface integral for f of x, y, z equals x, y where S is the surface, this is a parametric surface, R in terms of U and V equals 2 cosine UI plus 2 sine UJ plus VK bounded by U is between 0 and pi over 2 and V is between 0 and 2. Okay, to evaluate this surface integral of this parametric surface, I began by making a quick sketch of the surface. This is in parametric mode, so you can convert a rectangular to look at the surface. It's a portion of a cylinder. And um, so what we have here is the XYZ surface and the XYZ coordinate space. Um, but what I have right below is the UV. This doesn't necessarily translate to a projection like in the previous example, but we are given our bounds for u and our bounds for v. u go from 0, goes from 0 to pi over 2, and v goes from 0 to 2. So the region ends up being a rectangular region, both vertically and horizontally simple. So the, when we get to the part where we find our differential area, we can choose to do either du, dv. So our differential area here is either going to be du times dv or dv times du. Let's go ahead and find the, since we're given the surface here, we're going to find the cross product of RU with RV. Since R is given here, let's find the partial derivative of R with respect to U. And that partial derivative, you're treating U as a variable and V as a constant. The derivative of 2 cosine U is negative 2 sine u i plus the partial derivative of 2 sine u is going to be 2 cosine u j plus the derivative of v with respect to u you're treating u as a variable v as a constant so that's going to be 0 k. Now we also want to find the partial derivative of r with respect to v treating v as a variable and u as a constant so the derivative of 2 cosine u, we treat that as a constant, and that derivative is 0. The derivative of 2 sine u, also treating that as a constant, is 0. 
and then the derivative of v is going to be 1. We want to find the cross product of ru with rv. Okay, when you when you use the method of finding the cross product, you can cover up the i column and multiply across and across to get 2 cosine ui. Cover up that middle column, multiply across and across, subtract, and you'll get 2 sine u, that's our j. And then cover up that last column and multiply across and across, and that's going to be 0, k. We want to find the magnitude of this. Okay, the magnitude is found by taking the square root of 2 cosine u squared, that quantity squared, plus 2 sine u, that quantity squared, plus 0 squared. And this is going to simplify actually quite nicely to just 2. Because you get 4 cosine squared u plus 4 sine squared u, and if you factor out the 4, cosine squared u plus sine squared u is equal to 1, so the square root of 4 is equal to 2. All right, now let's go ahead and set up this surface integral. It's a surface integral. Our f of x, y, z that's given to us in the problem is x, y, x, y, d, capital S. Now what we're going to do is write this as a double integral d, writing everything in terms of u and v. We're going to replace the x in the integral with what x equals on the surface. On the surface, our x, our x is equal to 2 cosine u. So this is going to be 2 cosine u, that's our x. We're going to replace y with what y equals on the surface, 2 sine u, ds. Now ds is going to be our magnitude times our differential area. So that's going to be 2 times dA. Okay, now we can determine the bounds. We can either use the order du dv or dv du to get 2 times 2 times 2. We get 8 cosine u sine u and for our differential area, we can use du dv or dv du. If we use dv du, we can treat all of this as a constant first. And the bounds for v are going to go from 0 to 2. And the bounds for u will go from 0 to pi over 2. You can evaluate this double integral doing the inside first and then simplifying to get the outside. And you'll find that this is equal to 8. So we've evaluated the surface integral for f of x, y, z equals x, y. We're evaluating x, y over the surface given in parametric form. We find the partial derivatives of that surface with respect to u and v. We find the cross product and the magnitude of the cross product. Make all the substitution so you have a double integral in terms of u and v. You're eliminating the x and the y and evaluating the double integral.